So the off shoulder panel portion is going to be about 25 stitches and I'm going to work about 90 rows in total. I'm going to just do half double crochet into the third loop only. So I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot and slip it onto my crochet hook. And from here, I'm going to chain 25 stitches. To chain, just go ahead and wrap your yarn around your hook and pull through. You've made one chain. You just keep doing that until you get to 25. Once you have 25 stitches, go ahead and make two additional chains. Those are going to be your turning chains. Your turning chains basically mean that you're not actually going to be working these two chains. They're just to help with the height of your stitch. Now to do a half double crochet, you're going to wrap your yarn once around your hook and then go into the third chain from your hook. So one, two, three. Go into that loop or that stitch. Wrap your yarn around the hook again and pull up. So now you have three loops on your hook. You're going to wrap once more and you're going to pull through all three loops. So you've made one half double crochet. And from here, you are just going to finish out the row using half double crochet. So once you've finished your first row of half double crochet, go ahead and chain two more. So one, two, and then you're going to turn your work. And now we're going to work half double crochets into the third loop only. Now, what that means is if you look at the top of your work, you're going to see this braiding effect. You see these V's from here. You know, the left side of that V is what we would normally call the back loop, and then the right side is the front loop. Once we turn it to the side, what happens is that the left side of these Vs is still the front loop, but the right side is what we refer to as the third loop. And you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to find that third loop, put your hook underneath that third loop, go ahead and pull through, and finish that half double crochet. So again, right here, you see that, that third loop, you're going to put your hook underneath and make the half double crochet. And again, you're just going to repeat that. And this is really the stitch that you are going to do for the entirety of the project. Because if you see on the flip side, it's making that nice, like almost knit rib stitch effect. And it's bringing your uh, front and back loop Vs or that braid up to the front. Okay, so we have finished working that row and then if you flip it, you'll see that you have this really nice braid that's going down the front. And then go ahead and chain an additional two as your turning chain, turn your work, and then you're going to do the exact same thing. So again, you can see here that Essentially, by crocheting into that third loop only, you are kind of shoving <laughs> that braid into the front and creating this really beautiful, almost knit rib stitch like effect. And then uh, you are going to just do the same thing here. So go through the third loop and continue your half double crochets. And if you're like, oh, where'd my braid go? It's on the other side. 
So you're alternating uh, sort of where that braid stitch is going to be. So now you see that we're starting to really get that braiding effect on both sides. You're gonna continue this until you have a panel that's basically long enough to go around your arms, like your entire top torso area. I'm gonna make it slightly shorter. Uh, so the measurements for my panel are going to be 25 stitches by 90 rows. I want the off shoulder panel to sort of come in together at the center and make that like cutout detail almost. Um, but if you just want a regular off shoulder crochet sweater, go ahead and make this panel long enough to go around all the way. So to make the sleeves, it's a very similar process. Uh, but this time instead, we're basically going to go down the length of the arm. The amount of chains that we're going to start with is going to be equivalent to the length of your arm, like how long you want the sleeve to be. So measure it on yourself, and as you can see here, I made one of the sleeve panels already just to show you. I want the sleeve to start about like middle of my upper arm, and then I want it to go down to about my knuckles. I want it to be a fairly long sleeve. For the sleeve panel, I start off with 90 chains, and then I work 26 rows. We're just going to start off with a slip knot. Put it on our hook and then go ahead and chain 90. And once you've made all 90 chains or however many chains that you need, go ahead and make an additional two chains as your turning chain. So one, two, and then we are going to half double crochet into the third chain from our hook. So that'd be one, two, three, and then go ahead and half double crochet all along that row. It's basically going to be the same process as we did for the off shoulder panel, where we're gonna start off with a row of half double crochets and then uh, every row from there is going to be a half double crochet into the third loop only. Okay, so now that I'm done with this first row, I'm gonna go ahead and make two turning chains, flip my work or turn my work, and then go ahead and half double crochet into that third loop. So again, it is that like V shape formation slash braiding like you see in the front here. We're gonna take our hook and go underneath this guy that leg. We're gonna subsequently go under all of these legs. So now I'm going to be creating the back panel and to create the back panel it's yet again just gonna be another rectangle um, but the measurements for this one are going to be 50 stitches by 30 rows. Your stitch length on this one is going to determine how long you want the sweater to be. So if you want the sweater to be longer, go ahead and add more stitches. If you want it to be a little bit more cropped, then you can do fewer stitches. And then once you've chained enough for the length of the sweater, go ahead and add another two chains for your turning chain. And then half double crochet into the third chain for the rest of the row. And you're going to be using the same stitch work as you have been using before. I have finished my back panel. It is again, 50 stitches by 30 rows. I think I accidentally crocheted some of my, my dog's fur in it, <laughs> but there's the back panel. And now we're gonna work on the front panel. And this is the only panel really that we're not working in a straight up rectangle. So for the front panel, I am going to be crocheting the same stitch all throughout. In the center, I am going to make a little bust detail uh, by using some decreases and increases. 
Uh, but to start off, you are going to work a few rows. I'm going to be starting off with the same number of chains, so 50 chains. And then I'm going to work 10 rows. And once I have worked 10 rows uh, using the same half double crochet stitch that we have been doing, I will be right back to show you how I create that sort of sweetheart bust detail. All right, so I am working on the front panel and I've crocheted 10 rows of the half double crochet through the third loop only. Oh, and another tip, in order to count how many rows that you have, because if you're anything like me, you tend to just kind of shut your brain off and crochet. Um, I make sure that my tail is like down in this right bottom corner. And then from here, like each braiding that you see represents two rows having been done. So I go two, four, six, eight, and then 10. So I made 10 rows. And from here, I'm going to be decreasing six times total. And then uh, once I have done six decreases, I'm going to increase by six as well in order to sort of make that like V shape, like bust detail. And so the first thing I'm going to do is make a decrease in half double crochet through the third loop only. So in order to make these decreases, I'm going to wrap my yarn around once, go into that first loop, pull up yarn, so now you have three loops, and then go into the next uh, loop here, pull some yarn through. So now you have four loops on your hook. And go ahead, wrap, and go through all four loops at once. So you've made one decrease by doing that. And then go ahead and finish off the half double crochet for the rest of the row. And again, like these decreases and increases are kind of optional if you don't want to deal with it and you really just want the classic off-shoulder sweater look, you can just make another rectangle in all honesty. Uh, and you don't have to include the bust detail, but I want that keyhole detail to sort of show off a v-neck. And so that is why I'm doing these decreases and increases. Okay, so for the next row, we are going to turn our work and work those half double crochet through the third loops until you get to where you made your decrease at the other side. Now that I've reached the other side where I started making my decreases, I'm gonna go ahead and make yet another decrease. So again, wrap once, go under that first loop, or the, the third, first third loop, <laughs> pull up, and then go into the next third loop, pull up, and then pull all the way through. I'm going to be making six total decreases, AKA I am going to decrease until I have 44 stitches um, in my row. Once I get to 44 stitches, I'm gonna start increasing again to make like the other side of the, the V neck shape. As you can see, I've made decreases and we're starting to see that like V shape form. And now I'm going to work back up and make increases for the other side of the V. To do so, I, am, I have 44 stitches currently, and I'm gonna do yet again another row of 44. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chain two, turn my work, and work the 44. So I've worked yet another row of 44. Now I'm going to chain two and turn my work. So now we're gonna start working increases until we basically get back to the same number you started off with. So for me, that was 50. Uh, because this is like our bottom edge, we're not gonna do any increases or decreases down here. We're just going to work up until uh, the other side. So 
so now I'm at my 44th aka last stitch. So to make increases, all you're gonna do is put two half double crochets into that last stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one half double crochet and then another half double crochet. And that's how you make an increase. Now, another tip is that I found that when I'm making these increases, doing two turning chains at the start of each row uh, makes it for like a weird gap here. So I actually recommend that you only do one turning chain. So just one, turn your work, and then put two half double crochets into that very first third loop. Like that. And then you're just going to continue your half double crochets and you're gonna continue increasing like that until you get back to your original 50 or your original number of stitches. And then once you have finished those increases, you're gonna then do an additional 10 rows of your original 50 stitches. So now I'm gonna seam all of my sides together. And the way that I'm gonna seam everything together is I'm going to face my top or my front panel and my back panel uh, so that they're kind of at these edges right here. And then I'm going to take the middle of my sleeve panel and make sure it aligns at where these two panels meet. And then I'm going to seam together uh, these two panels here, these two panels here, and I'm just going to use my tapestry needle with some extra yarn. If you like pin this together, you're trying it on and you're like, oh, I just need like a little bit more stretch, a little bit more room. Instead of taking a tapestry needle and just seaming your edges together, you could take your crochet hook and make half double crochet or a single crochet to seam up your edges. Uh, so that will, it will give you a little bit more stretch if you do that. And then to actually seam it, I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle underneath my stitch, pull my yarn through, find the first loop on this guy, and I'm just gonna seam these edges all together. Okay, so my sleeve panel is now attached to my front and back panels. And now all I have to do is flip it and then uh, go ahead and seam up the sleeve on this edge and then seam up together the front and back panels and then repeat on the other side for the other sleeve. To attach the off shoulder portion to the rest of the sweater, I would recommend trying it on and pinning it sort of where you want it to be attached. She's finally done. I think she looks amazing. And also to tie together the off shoulder panel in the middle there, I just ended up chaining a really long chain uh, using the project yarn. But honestly, this is where you can get creative with it and customize it to your own liking. So you can either make it into a traditional off shoulder sweater. I just turned it around. Um, or you can use ribbon. I also had like hook and eye attachments, but they were kind of awkwardly small for the sweater, so I didn't end up using it. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial today. I think the sweater is super cute. Also, the yarn that I used is just so marvelously fluffy. <laughs> Make sure to check out my other crochet slash knitting tutorials or any of my styling videos. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you later. Bye!